so much time at home lately that most of us welcome a change. We go over some easy ways to refresh your bedrooms on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project, I'm Elena Capra. When it comes to redoing rooms in your home, we suggest the bedroom. Studies show it's one of the rooms that we spend the most time in, so why not treat yourself or your guests? Today we have simple design ideas to make your bedroom feel like a hotel suite. Create a stylish look by updating your headboard, spruce up your bedroom by changing out the accent colors, and so much more. So when it comes to refreshing a bedroom, I figured we would start with the guest room. So I wanted to share a couple of tips that you can easily refresh whatever room is designated for your guest room in your home. And these are just simple things to make your guests feel a little bit more comfortable, make it feel like they are visiting a nice hotel. And by that I mean having some of those amenities that you would experience when you're staying at a hotel. So starting with the luggage rack. Guests always come with luggage and they need somewhere to put it. And I think having this here helps keep the bags off the floor, helps the room feel a little bit more organized. And of course, there are blackout shades here because everyone needs a good night's sleep. So I have the shears here for the daytime so all the beautiful sunlight can come through. But at night, when it's time to sleep, there's a blackout roller shade right behind there. I added a storage bench here with a nice throw, adding a blanket. Sometimes we're in South Florida. We run the AC day and night in our homes. Sometimes the temperature for one person is different than the other, so I love adding the touch of a nice throw blanket on top. It also is a way to bring in some color or accent colors into your room. And this here is a storage bench, so if they're staying a while and they have a lot of stuff, it's one more area to store things. So I wanted to share with you a couple of other things that make the perfect guest room. We're gonna to get to the bed in a moment, but I wanna talk about the amenities and things that I've added. And it's all about having a room with double purpose. We're not necessarily gonna have guests every single day of the year. So when you're designing this room and you're adding something like a desktop computer, it's nice because it's also dual purpose as a home office. So I could easily utilize this room for myself when I don't have guests or my guests can have access to a computer, which is always a good thing. And of course, keeping something like the Wi-Fi password handy in the room is also always a nice touch. This way they don't have to ask, and it's right there. Think about what you find in a hotel and take all of those things and bring it into your home if you can. I think a rolling chair is a nice touch. I didn't want to make the room heavy with a bulky big desk chair, but this sort of does the job. And if you don't want that, what works nice is a decorative ottoman or stool. I like to have that in the room somewhere. Sometimes guests want to be able to sit to put on shoes, and so this gives you the opportunity for that. And a full length mirror. I think there's nothing more frustrating when you want to get dressed than not being able to see the shoes. So I want my guests to have that experience. I added the full length mirror. This is a leaner, so it's sort of out of the way. Gives them the opportunity to get that last look before you head out and enjoy your time visiting family and friends. So now the final piece, of course, of any bedroom or any guest room is the bed. You definitely want to have a comfortable bed. While I love my throw pillows, I tried to keep them to a minimum here. And the reason being is that guests don't need a lot of pillows to take off the bed at night. So I just basically kept the sham and just one decorative pillow. It was hard for me not to put more. I layer the bedding to make it comfortable for anyone who's staying here. So there's always gonna be a comforter or duvet as well as a quilt. This way there's something a little bit more lightweight and then the option of additional work. When it comes to the nightstands, I always love bedside lamps, but to make it easier, I did something really simple. I bought light bulbs that could be controlled by remote control. The reason this is so great is they can dim the lights, they can turn them on and off all at once, so it just can quickly power them down and then right back on. So I always keep the remote right by the bedside to make it even easier so they can enjoy their stay and not have to worry about much. Of course, having a little bit of a scent in the room is nice too, so I'd like to top the room off with a nice candle. This one brings in a touch of the color palette, but it also smells really good smells like the beach, so perfect for a South Florida guest room. Also, I added some plants. 
Because this is a room that might not always be occupied by guests, I chose a plant that needs minimal maintenance or watering, and that is a snake grass, so I put them in two spots in the room. It gives a little greenery, gives a little life, but it's not something I have to change all the time like flowers. But I just wanted to share with you a couple of tips to elevate the guest room to feeling like a resort hotel for your guests. Who doesn't want to make their guests feel special, right? Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, how to make your room feel like a luxury hotel suite. There are a lot of new homeowners right now, which means there's a lot of folks that really want to get projects done to their home. We're going to give you a few tips that's going to help you make the best decisions for you and your family on today's SoFlo Home Project. SoFlo Home Project, I'm Melina Capra, and we are sharing ways to make the bedroom more beautiful and luxurious. So whether it's your own bedroom or guest room, it's nice to make it look more luxurious, and sometimes it's as simple as setting up the bed to feel like a luxury resort. So we got a couple of great ideas we're going to share with you, but first I figured I would talk about this bed. I always like to layer the bedding. Start with either a blanket or coverlet and some sort of duvet or comforter folded. And the reason I like this is because it not only gives you options of weight for the blanket versus the comforter, but it allows you an opportunity to bring in different colors, textures, or even patterns. And here I bought in the gray from the headboard because I wanted to match that. And then the white on this matches just the pillows. So it gives a very uh, neutral look, but with different textured fabrics, like a soft velour and even that little touch of the fringe pillow. But we've got more ways for you to learn how to set up your bed like a luxury hotel suite, so check this out. So when it comes to the regular pillowcases, I personally don't like when the ends are just flopping around like this. So what I do is I tuck down one layer like this, and then I flip the other one in. This is what they do in a lot of the hotels if you don't already do this at home creates a nice clean edge. One thing people always ask is, do you keep the pillows up or flat? Now that again is a preference. Since the headboard here is kind of low, you can go either way. Okay, so the next thing usually I like to add is the decorative sham. And sometimes I like to have a little bit of the pillow behind peek out just for the effect. And now we've got our first layer of pillows. Okay, so. I love to make a bed with the quilt. Get one in a coordinating color that brings out the color of your, your shams and your coverlet. And here, it's all the way up and folded with the sheet. Now we have our comforter, and I'm gonna show you the first way I like to do this is just to have it almost as a foot quilt, okay? So, as you notice, what I'm doing here is I have the bottom layers flipped in. Now, we still wanna see the top of the comforter, so you're gonna pull it over, and you want it so it lines up with everything. And the reason I like to do it like this is if you want the comforter then, when you're in bed, it pulls up this way, and it's much easier than unrolling the whole thing. So we've got this draped over the bottom. It gives a nice fullness to the look. And now, throw pillows. What is decorating a bed without throw pillows? Now we're ready to go ahead with our next look. So let me uh, take off our decorative pillows for now. So not everyone likes this folded up at the bottom of the bed. If you want it to hang down further, we're gonna have this one drape over the base of the footboard. Okay, so when I have a lot of pillows, a lot of throw pillows going on, I usually bring the comforter or foot quilt a third of the way up the bed. When I don't have a lot, I kind of go halfway. So in this look, we're gonna fold it almost to the middle of the bed because remember, we still have accent pillows that will go across the front here and we have this beautiful coverlet that you want to see. So the point is to have lots of layers. And now another way to do this with your quilt underneath, I like to sometimes pull it all the way forward. So this way you don't have to see the sheets. So now here, I've left the uh, decorative button side out. Thought it was a nice touch, but I still am I'm really a fan of like three pillows across the front. So what do we have to choose from here? I've got a little lumbar pillow. All right, so this is our second setup. I got a few more ideas to show you on making up the perfect bed, but first let's see what Tac Granada from FHIA has for us today. 
In meeting with this new homeowner, we recognize that there's a lot of folks, especially right now in this hot real estate market, who just purchased the new home and is looking now that they're in the home to do some home remodeling and to change some things and make things better. So giving you a couple ideas and a couple tips of some things to look for so that when you're ready to make that decision, you're really educated and you're making the best decision for you and your new home. So we always start with the front entry door because it's something that obviously you use a lot coming in and out of the home and it's something that's a real vital part of protecting your home. Does it open and close properly? Is it sealed properly? Does it allow air to come in? Does it allow moisture to come in? Is it hurricane rated? Is it something really important? Do we feel safe? Do we feel secure from somebody potentially breaking in? From a cosmetic standpoint, there's some reasons to address the front door. Also from some functionality and as well as hurricane protection and safety, uh, we like to start with the front door and and walk around the perimeter to help homeowners assess what they have once we get here. So like right now, this door is a French door, which obviously swings out. Depending on what this family's planning on doing with the patio, we may suggest to change to a sliding glass door, which would give them more patio space because this takes away a few feet where you can't put furniture. We also want to recognize if there's small children in the house because once you put in a really heavy hurricane impact door, a lot of times if the wind catches this, it's dangerous for small children that could be running behind, so we want to make sure that that's safe. These are all a couple things that we like to talk about and really get a feel for what we're trying to accomplish and not only right now, but try to think ahead so that we're making the right decision when we make this investment. Also, it's so important, and we've stressed it in the past, how important it is to meet with a contractor and have a really good consultation, ask a lot of questions, and make sure you're getting the answers that are best for you and your family. And let's make sure that we can fit it into your budget so you can afford everything that you're trying to get done. Back to you, Elena. Thanks, Ted. So now that we've set up the bed two different ways, I also wanted to take this opportunity to show you different ways to style the throw pillows. Let's roll this down a bit because we're gonna put some more pillows. And like I was mentioning, here I pulled this all the way down just to give some more space because we're gonna stack it with pillows. All right, I sometimes even use the back sides of pillows. Sometimes the backs are just as beautiful. And another thing is again, sometimes it's nice to offset something just a little bit if it's smaller. You can also tuck this in if you want to. If you are have a nice footboard that you want to show off, it also keeps it from falling off the bed, which is great too. Now, we've got a very different look, just as beautiful. This is our last look. Coming up next, see how a custom headboard can add a designer look to your bedroom. In the summer months, as temperatures are getting hotter here in South Florida, we want to share with you some tips from the experts on how to keep your home cool. So we're here today joined by Mike Lang, the operations manager with Air Around the Clock, to help us find out a little bit more about why it's important to maintain our air conditioners. So Mike, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Elena. I appreciate it. What are some of the maintenance things that are important to keep them running? Well, Elena, really what customers don't realize is one of the most important things is the filter, okay? So we come through here, go through the filter, and it goes through the ductwork in your house. It's so significant if the filter is clogged up, it won't work properly. And so when the AC isn't working efficiently, also your electricity bills can go up. That's what people don't realize. Even if you have a unit that's older, it pays to replace it after 10 years because they're so ahead of it now as far as electric bills go and stuff because now they have higher sear equipment this is a variable speed unit so it runs at different levels with the fan in your house and keeping it cool in a consistent manner and uses less electricity while doing so so Mike I think there's sometimes nothing worse when you come home and the air conditioner has stopped working a lot of times when we'll sell a new air conditioner you know, the whole thing about air conditioning is it dehumidifies, okay? So the more this water dissipates out of this unit, the better it's running. So we'll put a new unit in, and then the people will realize there's a problem with the drain line because the unit's shutting off the floats, which you're saying, to go off. So we can, with that, if you have a problem with that, we can install what is right here. It's called a condensate pump, and that pushes the water out. With the older units, if you ever notice when you come home, you'll see there's a puddle on the floor. Never want to see that. There's a massive <laughs> amount of brown on your ceiling. It's dripping through into your dining room table. Okay, then you have issues where you need to actually get the drain line book cleared out, 
don't put bleach in, don't put other chemicals in. Like we have a maintenance agreement, we can come out every six months, we keep the drain line clear for you. The bottom line is really maintaining the unit is definitely something that is key and if it's an older unit, thinking about replacing it just for the sheer energy efficiency alone. It's amazing how efficient the units are today. If people think they're saving money by fixing their older unit, they could be saving money each month by the cost of their power bill going down, and then if they finance it, it's paying for itself. In a 10 year span, a unit will pay for itself. So how can viewers at home reach Air Around the Clock if they want to make sure their AC is running properly? We're simple to reach at Air Around the Clock. It's 888-FIX-MY-AC for Air Around the Clock. Welcome back to SoFlow Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and we are sharing tips on creating the ultimate bedroom, guest room, any bedroom in your home. And what is more important in a bedroom than the bed itself? I love an upholstered headboard. I think it brings a warmth and softness to the room and allows you to introduce another color. So this is just one option, which happens to be one of my favorites, but there are so many more, whether you like a traditional look, a modern look or somewhere in between. So check out this next segment where you can get a lot of design inspiration for all of the different types of upholstered headboards and beds. We're here at Upholstery USA in Davie joined by Scott Eisdorfer. Mm -hmm. And I thought right now it'd be really fun to talk about creating a custom headboard or bed and all the different options because there are just so many, right? Yep, yeah, I mean nowadays people are making headboards that are part of their wall. It doesn't have to be a separate headboard attached to the old bed frame, the old metal bed frame. It's always a nicer presentation. So there's so many different styles and I think what better time than to get everyone at home inspired of maybe if they're thinking about making their own. So let's show a couple of examples. So this is your plain headboard. You know, you could take the fabric, you pad it, put some foam behind it, and you can make squares on the walls, you can make rectangles, you could attach this to a, a frame as well. I think this is probably one of the most versatile looks because it's simple I think it could work for just about any style with the right fabric what I think is great about this is if you do multiple tiles of upholstery to create the headboard you could do diamond or square or just about any shape right the square becomes a diamond <laughs> how versatile is that how great <laughs> all right Scott so underneath this you've got what I think as a designer one of the most popular styles I've gotten requests for I see this everywhere in furnishings Diamond tufting, tell us about it. Well, diamond tufting is old fashioned. It's, it's a very rich look. It's the grand look. So there's another option, I think, for the more modern looks, and that's sort of the, the channeled, whether it's channel tufting or channel stitching. People can channel anything to give it more depth and definition to a plain headboard. A, a channel can go vertically or horizontally. So it could look like rectangles or vertical lines. So depending if you need height to make the bedroom look taller or you need width to make it look longer. So both great options. And now we have biscuit tufting. Biscuit tufting would be square tufting that's poofier. Um, it's a more modern tuft than a diamond tuft. You could do buttons in a straight line. Uh, you could do non-buttons and you just sew it and pull it in like a dart. Next on SoFlo Home Project, create a designer look by changing up your bedroom accent colors. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and we are sharing ways to refresh any bedroom in your home. So I thought it would be great next to share with you ways to bring a little bit of color into an otherwise neutral room. When I'm working with a space that's very neutral like this one, soft grays and whites, you could easily keep it as that neutral palette. But sometimes you want to refresh the colors in our room seasonally. So I'm going to show you my favorite way to do that. First, starting with the obvious, the pillows. So I'm gonna remove this here, and we're just keeping the same bedding because it's a great neutral ground, but I'm going to add these purple pillows. So when you add that, instant pop-up color, but you can't stop with just the pillows because there's a lot more ways to bring in that color to really refresh the whole bedroom. I actually have a piece of art here that also ties that in. So you could just change up, whether it's just a picture or some sort of wall art, that's a non-permanent way to add color. And it's all about the non-permanent things because this makes it easier to constantly refresh whenever you get tired of that color. Maybe next year I want blue or yellow. 
It's all possible when you do it like this. Okay, so accessories are the easiest way to also continue to bring in that color. So what I did here was, I love candles, and I found a beautiful candle in the same purple hue as the pillows. And this was actually an inspiration for the color. I love amethyst crystals. It's one of my favorite things right now. So that's sort of how I got the inspiration for the color palette. And remember that rule of three when grouping your accessories always works well. Vary the heights, we've got the higher buzz, the lower, and then of course something for a little bit of texture. I love adding that fresh floral element. As you can see, I can pull any of the colors from here. So I went a little bit more of a lilac hue because I didn't just want the amethyst tone. So have fun with your color, bring in some flowers, dress up the nightstands with a few small accessories. I hope everyone at home enjoyed this episode. We love sharing tips with you to refresh your home and hopefully all of your bedrooms will be looking beautiful this summer. And now check out what we have for you next week on SoFlo Home Project. We take an in-depth look at the versatility and beauty of man-made hard surfaces for the home. We even put the durability of these countertops to the test. And now let's see what Hunter Frankie from SoFlo Health has going on tomorrow. Hunter, what's up? Hey there, Elena. This week on SoFlo Health, we're at Super Blue, Miami. After that, we'll try a piece of workout equipment that scales to your strength level, then we'll recover those muscles with cold and light therapy. And last but certainly not least, we talk with Fort Lauderdale Ocean Rescue to learn about riptide safety and what you need to do to stay safe while being at the beach this summer. It's all tomorrow right here, 1230 on Local 10 for SoCo Health. Wow, that sounds great. We will definitely be watching. And to our viewers at home, thanks for joining us this week. And we hope to see you again next week for another episode of SoFlo Home Project right here on Local 10. And remember, there's no place like SoFlo Home. If you miss any part of this episode, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloHomeProject.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram.